I want the whole world to be Lusophone. Maybe not in like a colonizer kind of way, but in like a Brazil kind of way. Well, there's hella colonizers in Brazil though. Anyways, okay. Here's me speaking Portuguese when I started learning it back in 2018. Olá, uh, eu sou Elise. Um, eu moro nos Estados Unidos. Here's me speaking Portuguese about a month ago. Tudo depende do, do pecado e do, da pena. Eu acho que tem... A, a gente não quer sempre levar esse pecado e pena para todos os lados, mas é uma parte central. Eu acho que por isso a gente... As pessoas em geral não querem ser parte disso e não culpa elas, mas... Not my best work, but still pretty pretty stark difference, right? It's resource dump time. Somebody asked me a couple weeks ago if I could make a video on all the stuff that I use to learn Brazilian Portuguese. And I was like, you know what? That's a great idea. So today I want to talk a little bit about how I arrived at this point in this state, this condition that we call fluency. I don't want to say fluency to mean mastery, but comfort, you know? Comfort. Mas antes de começar, eu acho muito importante dar um disclaimer, né? Que o meu aprendizado do português não foi o caminho tradicional. Ou seja, eu não, eu não comecei desde zero. Eu comecei com uma base já em espanhol e por isso o processo foi muito mais fácil. O meu aprendizado foi mais como um desaprendizado do espanhol do que um aprendizado do português, né? Eu te sempre estou tentando separar os idiomas na minha cabeça, que não é muito fácil. Se você fala os dois idiomas, você sabe que tem muitas similaridades, mas também tem muitas coisas específicas que não compartilham. E, bom, é isso aí. So, when I started learning Portuguese four years ago, I was really interested in finding, like, teaching resources. Um, I didn't just want to start consuming content immediately, I wanted to just get exposed to the language and learn some different things about it. And the first thing I found was Street Smart Brazil. Um, Street Smart Brazil is a website, it's like a teaching service, you know, they offer like live classes and materials and resources and things like that, but I don't use those, I go to their blog. If you go to their website and go over to the blog tab, they make all these blog posts about, you know, specific topics in Portuguese, whether it's the difference between SC and a or you know how to talk about war in Portuguese, how to talk about Valentine's Day and love in Portuguese. And it's super good for self-study because I remember back when I was just starting, I would just Google something like, what's the difference between Essie and Akeli in Portuguese? And inevitably, so, like a blog post from Street Smart Brazil would always show up in the results because they've just covered so many different topics. Like the site's been up since 2008, so they have had time, you know? So if you're looking for something like some topic about learning Portuguese, they've probably definitely covered it. And this specifically was super useful for me as someone coming from a Spanish-speaking background because, you know, like I said, I didn't need to start from zero. I was more so looking for, you know, things I could learn that were different from Spanish and how they were different from Spanish. So I could kind of get an idea of like, what is Portuguese, you know? How are these two languages different? You know, I remember reading the article, how to use the verb gostar in Portuguese because it's different than in Spanish. Because in Spanish you say, me gusta eso, like, I, or it's pleasing to me and for I like this. But in Portuguese you just straight up say I like it. Eu gosto disso. And that was like mind-blowing for me. I was like, holy shit, this is a separate language from Spanish? Well, so thank you Street Smart Brazil for helping me understand how Portuguese stands on its own two legs because it really is like its own thing. You know, it's not just a different or, you know, a swirly Spanish as I used to say when I started learning. It's so unique and has so many like intricate little things that are so fun to learn about. Next, the Speaking Brazilian Language School. This is a YouTube channel um, run by a woman named Virginia. And on this channel, she kind of does the same thing that Street Smart Brazil does, but just in video form. So she'll take a specific topic and explain it to you in Portuguese, um, but with English subtitles, so that's helpful. Um, so she, I remember she, I watched the video recently, like, is the double negative in Portuguese actually correct, even though Brazilians say it all the time? You know, no say no. What's the imperative in Portuguese? What's the difference between acá, aí, ali, lá, all that stuff? She also does vlogs so that you can just hear Portuguese speak in in its natural environment. Um, she also does like quiz or test videos. So it's super interactive. She's super creative with it. I really admire also the production quality Quality, those videos are like top-notch. So if you're not already watching her channel, go. Go right now. Bye. Next up, music. Now, I would definitely be lying if I didn't say that music has been the biggest inspiration for me to begin and continue learning Portuguese, specifically Brazilian Portuguese. Because if you know, you know. There's so, there's such a vast richness of Brazilian music that is just so powerful, diverse, good. 10 out of 10. 1 million out of 10. 
Okay. If you want the short form of the spiel, I do have a playlist on Spotify if you'd like to go follow that and just get, you know, all my favorite hits in just one go. But yeah, anyways, moving on, I think my favorite Brazilian music ever is 70s rock. Um, some of my favorite artists that are actually kind of niche because I've shown them to my Brazilian friends and they're like, who the hell is this? Where did you find this music? Ave Sangria, um, they were mostly active in the 70s. Some of my favorite songs from them are O Pirata, The Pirate. Minha casa é o reino do mal, meu pai é um animal. And Selvaggi. Eu trago dentro do peito um coração apaixonado batendo pelo senhor. Senhor tem que dar um jeito, senão eu vou cometer. Period. Also, Sergio Sampaio, he was mostly active in the 70s and he has this really baller ass album called Tem Que Acontecer, It Has To Happen or It Must Happen. Oh, I can't even, like every song off that album is my favorite, but there's Velho Bandido, which I really love. Cabras Pastando, O Que Pintar Pintor, Chef's Kiss. Instrumentals, voice, playfulness, cadence, it's like a million out of 10, again, for me. There is one song in particular that started it all for me in Portuguese. It's called Brasis. Um, I'm not sure, I think Seu Jorge composed it and he's also performing it in my favorite version. You have to listen to this specific version. I'm gonna leave it down in the description below. It's him performing it live and it has English subtitles and also like footnotes that are left in the description so that you can understand like the cultural references in the song. So it's called Brasis, right? Which is the plural of Brazil. So it's kind of referencing the whole song, like the two different sides of Brazil. So there's like this world soccer champion, beach paradise, glamorous Brazil. And then there's the, you know, I guess, uglier side of Brazil, which is like, it's violence, it's systematic problems, maybe poverty. Pede paz, saúde, trabalho e dinheiro. Pede pelas crianças do país inteiro. It's just, it's everything about Brazil in a song. I cried when I first heard it and it's still to this day, like I was listening to it yesterday and I started crying. It just packs so much like history and emotion, the way he performs it. I could write a fucking 30 page thesis on this specific performance of this song. So please go listen to it. I'm gonna leave the link down in the description. It will change your life. So Jorge is like a very, very famous Brazilian singer. One of the most popular like modern day uh, musical artists in Brazil. He's also an actor. I mean, he's versatile. Okay, don't get it twisted. I even follow his children on Instagram just to get more Seu Jorge content. I'm like obsessed with him. But also by Seu Jorge, I know he's such a popular artist, but I feel like an album of his that doesn't get talked about very frequently is The Life Aquatic. It was a commission. So he did this album for a movie actually, because I did say he's also an actor. The movie, The Life Aquatic, he translated a bunch, or not translated, he rewrote a lot of David Bowie's songs in Portuguese and made them all acoustic. And it's so a good album it was so transformative for me especially during my college years and you know when you know the songs in english and you see the lyrics in portuguese it's just so beautiful how you know he rewrote them and kind of maybe changed the meanings kept some things the same lay down have a nice cup of tea listen to the album relax it'll change your life okay rapid fire other artists that i love we got chi maya of course descobridor do sete mares is my favorite by him milton nascimento elis regina just because we share the name tribalistas which is actually a trio um my favorite song by them is a classic it's called velha infancia and this song is so funny because apparently um every brazilian child has to like sing it at school at some point and for like their parents or something somebody passed that information to me at one point when i posted the song on my story and i was just like hmm okay if you love 90s rap specifically like tupac and biggie you're gonna love hasu naisim says because they they were doing the exact same thing that tupac and biggie were doing in the states just in brazil like addressing you know structural societal problems racial inequality police violence they were doing all of that but just you know in the context of brazil and in portuguese also it's just fucking like gangster like good music all right my favorite is capitulo 4 versículo 3 and jerium jum de tanto those songs are so damn good and they really speak on some problems that are still to this day really prominent in brazil so get educated so those are all my musical recommendations come from the bottom of my heart. I refuse to gatekeep, so here's all my favorites. Take them, take. On to TV and movies. Now, if I could only watch one Brazilian film for the rest of my goddamn life, it would have to be Cidade de Deus. And I know all the Brazilians watching this are like, come on, Elise, you couldn't come up with something more original. No, I couldn't, okay? Classical, classical. 
Bon. So it's a movie set in the 60s and 70s. It's about this kid, Buscapé. He's a black kid in Brazil and he comes from the slums, like the favelas, but he wants to be a journalist, specifically a photojournalist. And he gets a camera and he starts taking photos, but he really quickly gets involved with like gang violence. Um, not himself, just like as an outsider. I don't even know how to describe it. It's like everything. It's so good. Um, it's very Tarantino-esque. Not to always compare it to the US, but I know a lot of my viewers have seen Quentin Tarantino movies so you might be able to compare. It's just that you know it's very Tarantino-esque in the fact that it goes in chapters and it's also very in-depth in all of the characters like you see all sides of the movie because you see everybody's backstory. It's just so damn good. Literally I've watched this movie probably 10 times and I'll keep watching it for the rest of my life. I don't care. If you are a beginner though I will give you this piece of advice to watch it with subtitles first because it's very carioca like from Rio it's very fast. It's also very vulgar like they say boja every five seconds so if you if you remember one word by the end of this movie it's going to be bo Boha. and seu jorge my bae is in the movie so if you needed another reason to watch it go watch it just for seu jorge he's amazing in this movie you would think that he's just an actor like you would never imagine that he's so multi-talented but he really does the damn thing speaking of seu jorge again a series that i've been loving really recently um i think a new season just came out on netflix it's called brotherhood or irmandaji it's about this dude who gets in prison for something stupid i think it was just weed but he gets like 20 years or more that's so georgie and his sister is an attorney and she's like in the process of trying to get him out but only to save her own neck so he doesn't know that she has like an ulterior motive it's super juicy i'm not gonna spoil everything so go watch it yourself but it's very very good it's also very vulgar just like cidade de deus so yeah you're gonna learn how to curse from these two recommendations i just gave you and my next recommendation isn't a specific tv show or a movie it's actually a platform so i've really been into lingo pie recently i just discovered it and i'm so so loving it it's like a subscription video on demand platform but specifically for language learners so if you've been exhausted you know looking through you know, video on demand platforms like Hulu or Netflix for stuff to watch, you can just go to LingoPie and they have it all cut out for you there. Like, it's for us, bro. Go take it. It's all originally produced content for the platform, so like TV shows, miniseries, short videos, uh, movies as well, and they do it in a ton of languages, so like Japanese, Korean, Russian, Portuguese, Italian, German, French, Spanish. That's a heck of a ton, and they are looking to expand this list in the future, so if you didn't hear your favorite language in that list, do not fret. It, you know, it might be there in the future and when you're watching the content you can choose subtitles between just your target language just english both of them or what's called mashup whereas like they give you the subtitles in english but they also mix it in with the target language to kind of just provide a more well-rounded like contextualized experience i tend to use just either just the target language subtitles or both i really don't see the point in using just english subtitles for me i love immersion so this you know the subtitles feature is really flexible and it gives you great multiple ways to immerse yourself and the subtitles are clickable so when you click on a word it'll instantly add it to a flashcard deck that you can practice after you're done watching or, you know, while you're still watching the content. So I'll be watching something and the little pop quiz will come out of the side and you get to answer like four to five questions where you match the word to its meaning, which is really helpful for like checking your understanding as you go instead of just, you know, reviewing the words after you're already done. I feel like it makes for a lot like more well-rounded experience watching content. It's super interactive and detailed and flexible. I just, you know, I could talk about its features all day, but it really does allow you to like personalize your viewing experience and make it, you know, most fruitful for you. And honestly, again, talking about Portuguese, I was so, so shocked to see the quantity of like European Portuguese content that they have on here. Like they have a ton of Brazilian stuff, but also a ton of like European Portuguese. So if you're not locked into one dialect yet, that's super awesome. You know, I haven't ever seen, you know, European Portuguese promoted in that way, especially on like a, a video on demand platform. So respect. It's also the same thing with like German. I was saying that they have like Austrian content or, you know, in French, they have content from Mozambique or Canada. So I think that's super awesome because I am always like a big proponent of, you know, exploring different dialects and maybe fostering a cultural connection that way. And they do have a free seven day trial. So if you did want to try it out, I will leave a link down in the description. I just think it's so cool that like, I could, I could have never imagined this for the language learning community that we get a video on demand service just for us, just for language learning. That's wild. So if you tried it out already or you will after this video, which I know you will, um, leave me a comment down below letting me know what you think. 
And the last thing I'm going to talk to you about for learning Portuguese, but also just like this applies to any language in general, is backwards learning. I always put my own terms on stuff, so I'm not sure if there's already a term for this, so please excuse me if there is, but it's basically where you learn a language through a resource that's not meant for you. Um, I remember when I started learning Portuguese, I still love this podcast to this day. It's called Aprender Inglês com Música, so learn English through music. Obviously, I don't need to learn English. I'm a native English speaker. Um, but this podcast was meant for Brazilians who are learning English. So by listening to this podcast by teacher Milena, she is picking apart English songs and translating them to Portuguese. She gives like, you know, she gives mini quizzes to say like, okay, how would you say this sentence in English? But you know, I'm kind of just doing it backwards and learning new vocabulary in Portuguese throughout the process. It's kind of weird, kind of a weird method, but I love it. It's like kind of immersion, pretty easy, honestly, because you do have like your native language or another language that you speak to a higher level as like the reference. So why not, you know? Another random resource I use to employ backwards learning is my friend Abraham's page on Instagram. It's called Bora Falar Espanol. Now Abraham is Mexican, he's from Monterrey, but he made a page for Brazilians who are learning Spanish, specifically like Latin American Spanish or Mexican Spanish. And it's cool because obviously I'm not learning Spanish. I already speak Spanish fluently, but you know, for example, I saw today one of his posts was like, como é que eu falo vizinho fofoqueira em espanhol, like the gossipy neighbor. And I already know how to say that, vizinho chismoso, but it's just cool that I get to reference that and see what it's called in Portuguese. And basically, you know, kind of learn more about natural expressions in Portuguese. What are some of the mistakes that Brazilians make when they learn Spanish and so on. In the process, I do learn a little bit more about Spanish sometimes, but it's mostly just about like the Portuguese. It's it's so fun. I feel like backwards learning or this method is not something that people always talk about, but I love it, you know? It's, it's cool to have something that you already speak so well as a reference language and just focus and act like, you know, you're part of the experience. I'm just a Brazilian learning Spanish, nothing to see here. I'm just a Brazilian learning English, nothing to see here. It's genius. I'm a genius. <laughs> Uh, no, I, I didn't come up with that. I don't know. Maybe I am genius. I don't know. But that is that. I think that is a very all-encompassing, you know, version, a spiel of how I learned Portuguese, how I did in the past, how I do more so these days as an advanced speaker. But anyways, thank you so much for watching this video. Um, I hope that you were super motivated to learn Portuguese now. I want everybody in the world to learn and master Brazilian Portuguese. I want the whole world to be Lusophone. Maybe not in like a colonizer kind of way, but in like a Brazil kind of way. Oh, there's hella colonizers in Brazil though. Anyways, okay. So I'll see you next time. Take care and see you on the flip.